These cubs are the latest additions to the largest group of captive giant pandas in the world. Around seven months old, they were bred in a desperate bid to save the species from extinction. But there are still too few pandas. As the mating season begins, at least 15 more cubs must be conceived this year alone if the species is to survive. And time is not on their side. China's Conservation and Research Centre was set up at Wulong in Sichuan Province in the 1980s at a critical time for wild pandas. Their precious bamboo began to flower and became inedible. The work seemed straightforward. The plan was to rescue starving wild pandas and then breed more pandas from them. But this seemingly simple task took a long time to achieve, and it wasn't until 20 years later that Wulong witnessed the fruits of successful breeding. In 2006, a record-breaking 18 panda cubs were produced. The following year, another 14 panda cubs were born. There are now more than 60 pandas at the centre, and another 80 live at zoos and research centres in China and abroad. But even though Wulong is full to capacity, there still aren't enough captive pandas. Every so the race goes on. Contrary to popular belief, wild pandas breed as easily as any other bear. But captive pandas have always been a problem, even here at Wulong. Only about a quarter of pandas are able to go into estrus naturally, and only one in ten male pandas are able to mate naturally. And they have precious little time to do so. As this year's mating season starts at Wulong, the pressure mounts. It's almost the end of March. There are 16 females already in estrus. 
merely three mating males, only eight breeding pens available, and just a few days to get the job done. And those aren't the only problems. Pandas are just as particular about their partners as humans. And saving the species can sometimes be thwarted by the simple fact that some pandas can't stand the sight of each other. It's day one of Wulong's annual breeding bonanza. On the male team are three wild caught pandas, Wu Gong, Ling Ling, and of course, Wulong's star stud, Lulu. Their wild genes are crucial to the breeding program, as many of the females are captive bred. The three males are expected to service all the females currently in estrus, but the limited number of breeding pens means there's only room for five females at any one time. They constantly have to be moved into position, in and out of different pens, while the males stay put. <laughs> One of the first females to show signs of readiness is 13-year-old Feifei, whose name means concubine. She makes her feelings and heightened hormonal state as plain as her name. As in any proper relationship, the couple have to be formally introduced before matters can be taken any further. Wu Gong, as the first potential suitor, is kept indoors initially, so that both parties can have a risk-free mutual assessment. <laughs> Fei Fei's behaviour makes it impossible for anyone to ignore. Except, it seems, Wu Gong. His mind is clearly focused on higher things, such as his stomach. Wu Gong is definitely not a this is but Fei Fei simply doesn't have the luxury of waiting for Wu Gong to finish his dinner. Her estrogen level is peaking and will soon dip again. She will be at her most fertile and must find a more reliable mate quickly. But the first problem is to get Lulu indoors before Fei Fei can safely enter his den. A seemingly simple task, but Lulu has other ideas. 
In the wild, the higher a male leaves his mark, the stronger and more virile he's considered, and the more attractive he is to the ladies. With Lulu safely indoors, it's time to introduce Fifi. At first sight, it seems that Lulu, like Wu Gong, isn't at all interested in Fifi. But the keeper's experience tells a different story. It may be early for the adults, but for the products of last year's meeting, it's well past their bedtime. Not that many of the cubs make a distinction between sleep and activity. As evening draws on, Feifei's hormone level peaks, and as it begins to fall, the pressure is on for one of the male pandas to perform. Despite his earlier lack of interest, the keepers decide to give Wu Gong another go. At first, things seem to be going well. But then Wu Gong seems to lose all sense of direction. <laughs> Fei Fei, in turn, loses patience with him and vents her frustration. <laughs> disappointed keepers take an even more disappointed Fei Fei back to her own pen. It's time to bring Lulu in again. <laughs> to everyone's relief, not least Feifei's, tonight's mating is a success. Copulation lasts a highly satisfactory 6 minutes and 29 seconds. <laughs>
Having been up most of the night, Lulu is in need of a little rest and recuperation. Wu Gong, however, still has a healthy appetite. But his lacklustre performance the previous day has serious implications. Half of the centre's female panda's oestrogen levels are now peaking. They need to be mated soon or there won't be enough pandas next year. They cannot rely solely on Lulu, despite his successful track record, because they must introduce more males to the breeding group and widen the gene pool. Ling Ling, the third male on the team, is introduced to Cao Cao. But things don't quite work out. He appears no more adept at mating than Wu Gong. Reinforcements are required. They come in the shape of Chung Chung, whose name means strong. He's actually a 21 year old male panda in the process of losing his teeth and hair. Chung Chung might not seem an ideal solution to the problem, but he's not expected to perform in the same way as the other males. With the female panda's biological clocks ticking away, Chung Chung has a more indirect but vital role to play. His semen has just been collected in the hospital, and while he recovers from the anaesthetic, his contribution to the breeding programme will be put to good use. As has happened many times before. Chung Chung has been a vital if unwitting participant in the plan to save the planet's precious pandas. Feifei, having been successfully mated with Lulu, will now undergo artificial insemination. Many of the breeding females at Wulong are artificially inseminated as well as being mated naturally. Twins have played a crucial part in reaching Wulong's breeding target and making it a success story. Before Feifei can undergo artificial insemination, she needs to be anaesthetised. She must be thoroughly checked over and most importantly weighed to ensure that the right amount of anaesthetic is administered. Once sedated, she's raced to the hospital, 
so that the artificial insemination can be completed before she wakes up. The calculations were apparently wrong. But for safety, they erred on the side of caution. Too little is better than too much. The artificial insemination is completed and Feifei is put in a quiet enclosure away from the breeding pens. They won't know for sure if it was successful until late summer, when the birthing season begins. Many of the other females in the block are also stimulated by the comings and goings in the other pens. Shi Shi starts chirping and moaning very loudly, and it's decided to try Wu Gong to see if she is more his type than Fei Fei. Shi Shi is visibly irritated by Wu Gong's apparent incompetence. She turns on him. Then Wu Gong suddenly reveals another side to his character. Perhaps he's not the apathetic, passive panda he appears to be. Despite his outburst, the keepers know Wu Gong's true character and easily tempt him away from Shi Shi with his real interest in life. Lulu, meanwhile, is being reacquainted with his very first love, Ying Ying. Like Lulu, she was a wild caught panda, but at eight years older, more mature and experienced. But Lulu's lost that loving feeling and shows absolutely no interest. Disappointed, they move her through to Wu Gong. But no joy. Aware that Ying Ying's hormone level has peaked and is dropping, there's a sense of urgency. But persisting with Lulu backfires horribly. It may look frightening, but the keepers aren't worried. The centre's director is also unperturbed by the violence and points to an even more logical explanation for the aggression. As is painfully evident when Lulu is introduced to Long Shen. Perhaps best illustrated when Ling Ling is introduced to Mei Cheng and the situation becomes even more violent. She races next door to try to get away from him. Once safely indoors, Mei Cheng is clearly terrified, but only suffers minor cuts and scratches. Nothing serious. We've been in the outside for so many years, we've never seen a 
把熊猫给打到死亡的是没有的。Comparing the behaviour of captive pandas and their wild relatives is an important part of Wu Long's work. The long-term plan is to release some of Wulong's pandas into the wild. One of the reasons there are only eight breeding pens available out of a possible ten is because two of the pens are currently being used by the release team. As more and more females start to come into estrus, the breeding team thinks they should have priority over the pens. Once they've successfully reached the target of 300 pandas for a sustainable captive population, the hope is to use those pandas to help reach a sustainable wild population of 3,000. But the centre's director is sceptical. It's不可能说无限制的增加 the real problem for wild pandas remains the lack of protected habitat. This is part of that precious protected habitat. 850 kilometers northeast of Wulong, 6,000 feet up in the Qinling Mountains. On the site of an ancient Buddhist temple, a team of scientists at the Qingling Giant Panda Research Base have been studying the behavior of wild pandas for more than a decade. The damp climate may be good for bamboo and pandas, but it's not so good for humans trying to study them. When there is a break in the clouds, observing the behaviour of wild pandas is considered easier here than in Sichuan. The density may be higher than in Sichuan, but there are still only around 60 to 100 pandas living in an area of around 300 square kilometers and searching for these elusive wild pandas to study requires long treks, sometimes 
for several days and climbing thousands of feet. As at Wulong, it's the spring mating season, and the chances of seeing pandas in the wild are increased because the pandas come down to the lower slopes to mate. Until a female is successfully mated, a number of males will congregate wherever she leaves her scent marks. The task of finding and filming giant pandas is still far from simple. But after a long and exhausting climb, the sound of loud bleating and chirping raises hopes of a chance to get close enough to study them. Not too close. Like any wild bear, they're very dangerous, especially at a time like this. This is a very rare sighting of one of Feifei's distant wild cousins. From the growls, it's obvious the males will have no energy left for fighting, as Lulu does with the females in Wulong. Since the last national survey of panda numbers in 2001, which calculated that there were around 1,600 wild pandas, scientists here have completed another survey of a number of reserves and subsequently come up with a very surprising result. The wild panda population might have already reached the magical figure of 3,000. But Dr Zhang Zhejun still doesn't consider this to be a sustainable population and believes that the giant panda remains an endangered species. And even if the future looks a little brighter for pandas, another ominous threat to the survival of the species is emerging. High in the Qinling Mountains, research scientist He Zhang Bo has been observing the pandas' food as closely as the pandas themselves. Here, they eat around 20 kilos of bamboo every day, mainly Bashana bamboo. And he's discovered something very worrying. This is the flower of Ancient folklore says that when bamboo flowers, 
death and destruction follow, and modern science agrees. The bamboo will die within three to five years after flowering, then the seeds will drop into the soil, but will take another seven to ten years to germinate and become edible once more. If panda numbers really have risen to 3,000, they're now at risk of plummeting again. Much 一般就是它是六十到一百年，它是一个周期，一个生命周期。这个时间啊，现在没有一个统一的定论。While they struggle to avoid the same fate that befell the pandas in Wulong, ultimately, scientists here are absolutely clear about what needs to be done to protect giant pandas, whether there are sixteen hundred or as many as three thousand. 我认为应该是两个方面争取在最短的时间的尽快将这个卷扬大熊成功的成功的放归到野外去。Back at Wulong, they're getting on with the first part of that task, making more pandas. It's now April, the peak of the breeding season, and as more and more females come into estrus, the keepers are under increasing pressure. Whether they'll reach this year's target depends a great deal on Wu Gung, who seems to have no sense of urgency. Despite his hopeless history, the keepers are encouraged by Wu Gong's burst of energy during his earlier encounter with Shi Shi. They've decided to reintroduce him to Ying Ying. Wu Gong, however, seems to have reverted to his old ways, suffering from an apparent lack of coordination. Things seem to be going in ever decreasing circles. As Wu Gong looks around, as if he's desperate for encouragement or support, disappointed keepers decide to cut the meeting short and tempt him away. Wu Gong obviously interprets the apple as sustenance and hangs on. While Ying Ying is clearly unimpressed with the entire performance. After yet another disappointment, the last chance is the other male in the group, Ling Ling. But Ling Ling isn't being very cooperative. The reason for Ling Ling's obstinate behaviour is in the voluptuous shape of a new female in the pens. She may, which means happy and lucky girl. She May's scent drives Ling Ling crazy. And her appeal isn't limited to him. She May appears to be a source of passion and delight to all the boy bears, most of all, Lulu. She 
She successfully mated with both Ling Ling and Lulu in 2006 and subsequently gave birth to twins. <laughs> but last year, Shi Mei mysteriously came into Estrus six months late, which was a source of concern for the keepers and Lulu alike, and resulted in the latter banging against the side of his pen for weeks on end. Shi Mei has now returned to a normal cycle, and it's having a big impact on all her neighbours. There's something about this panda that drives wild pandas even wilder. Surely even Wu Gong will find her charms impossible to ignore. Alas, not. With Lulu gazing longingly at the love of his life, things between Shi Mei and Wu Gong follow a familiar path. At one point, the roles are even reversed. Finally, the moment arrives for lovesick Lulu to show Wu Gong how it's done. But instead of leaping on Shi Mei in his usual domineering way, Lulu romps about with her and they play like small cubs. Both behave like mating is just a big game. It's hard to believe that Lulu is the same panda that was so aggressive with the other females. She may, or may not, be the love of his life. Their coupling looks likely to succeed without any of the drama and violence that marred other meetings. But whether their relationship will result in cubs capable of being released into the wild, it's impossible to know. Wulong will probably reach the target of 15 pandas this year, in spite of Ling Ling and Wu Gong's slow start. These are some of their offspring from last year. The cub's early ancestors lived around two million years ago. Their decline is due to us. Whether these pandas will become part of a sustainable population and survive for even a fraction of that time isn't the responsibility of Lulu, Ling Ling, or even Wu Gong. It's also down to us. Oh, the other two, are, they just switch spoon positions, that's all. <laughs> oh, let's give up. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just rolling all over the place. No one's probably really young. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's like, you hurt me. I give up.